months. Now, this is in 55. Skip has already gone to school the whole school year for Oregon. I am not sure why the county felt that they needed at that point to decide if they were going to desegregate or not. But they did, uh, apparently. And so they did decide to go ahead with it in the fall of 55. Uh, the paper reported that at that time there were two to attend Morgan and 12 found. Turns out three went to Morgan and the rest to found. Uh, let's see, those students attending Morgan were Reuben Johnson, he was in the fifth grade, Patsy Porter in the second, and Skip Taylor in the first. Uh, wait, in the in 55 again. Uh, 11 attended found. Deborah Hood, Ed Lowe, and Sharon McGee Chapman were first graders. <coughs> Eric Abercrombie and Chipper McGee, who we were trying to go on, uh, were second graders. Uh, Alonzo Allen in the third, Rosemary Allen Graves in the sixth, uh, William Graves ninth, Joe Merrick eleventh, and Thomas Graves in the twelfth. Four of those students are no longer with us. So I do want to recognize the Merritt family here. Joe Merritt was a junior, and he graduated from Falmouth High School in 1957. He died on the 14th of September, 1981, at the age of five. 45. <laughs> yeah, <age> five. <laughs> I debated on where he was. 45. And he left a family of two sons and a daughter, and they are all here today, correct? Yes. Yes, I thought I'd like to hear from the to the bridge. Yes. 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 Um, we also have with us the family of Skip Taylor, Ralph Taylor, Jeanette is sitting back here. Um, and he went to both Falmouth and Morgan before it's all over. He transferred to Falmouth for high school. By the time he got to high school, his choice was Pendleton County. It was or found. There was no longer a Morgan High School by that time. Mr. Chapman, you want to start and tell us, tell us about your experience. I've asked you guys to think about what it was like for you. You were a first grader. I was a first grader, so I don't remember a lot about it. I'm sure. I was not nervous or scared. I always loved school and I couldn't wait to go to first grade. And my mom had already, had already taught me how to read. And my mom and a lot of things I already knew that I was learning in first grade. I wasn't bored because I just loved being in school. But um, I don't remember anything about the segregation part of the interest. Right. Now later on, my mother told me that the Catholic school, um, Father Busmeyer, had come down to our house and invited us to come to the Catholic school we wanted to. But I guess since we were non-Catholic, you know, that she didn't uh, do that with us. And my understanding of the Catholic school is that it was always desegregated mm -hmm. from the time it started. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then my brother Chip, I figured out why he never liked school very much. I thought if I was the first grader and he had to get on a bus every one or two, get on a bus every morning to go 22 miles, to the nearest school where you were accepted, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd probably fall asleep during class too. Sure. And then friends of mine who lived in Cynthia at the time said, um, I want to come on the they told me that uh, Chip's teacher spanked him every time he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. And that was not a good experience. Oh, no. Uh, especially to be a first grader. So um, that disturbed me, but you know, years later, what can you do? Right. Well, so, and really, he was on the bus probably longer than what 22 miles takes. Right. right. So, so I think they had to go to school. We got to pick everybody up, including the people in Morgan, right? They all were in the same bus, I think. Um, I don't know if I can imagine. But as a first grader, I don't have, you know, any specific memories that were um, negative. And when I went to school, my memories were positive because I always had friends in the neighborhood anyway. And we were out playing most of the day and you know, I could get to school work then. Um, so I, I don't have anything negative to say, not because I'm programmed that way, but because I didn't experience the same thing other people may have experienced. 
because whatever experience we had, those were coming from our hearts, our minds, our families, our friends. So in totality, I can say that I'm, I felt good about my experience, but I didn't have the same experiences that Chip or even Eric had. So, you know, they were living different experiences than I had. Do you think some of that is, is uh, due to gender, maybe? I mean, you being a girl and what you think being a girl is, or not? Um, I, I don't see it as a gender bias okay. there. I thought maybe since your experiences were positive and they have different experiences. No, I think just being different grade levels and ages, but no, I, I don't think it's a gender bias. You want to talk about it, Eric? Well, first, let me get Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to say, Scott, thank you so much. I never thought I'd come back to family, to family for anything other than than a funeral <laughs> or to the cemetery. I have ways of doing that to people, yeah. right, Rob? Well, <laughs> I'll be honest with you because, uh, let me put it this way. Balance to me represents good, bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not here to talk about the bad or the ugly, so I'll talk about the good later on. <laughs> so let me answer your question so I can talk a lot. Actually, my first school, and, and, and let me acknowledge the queen, <laughs> this, lady over, this, this lady over here, because look, yeah. Ann Hendricks, right, all of you all know, she was my babysitter. <laughs> and, and a lot of when you live, when you live and you get older, you always wonder where you come from. This lady is the holder of my history. Mm -hmm. She is the old, holder of my history. Nobody in this room has known me as long as her. So uh, I've always appreciated that. Uh, I asked her today, did I come here on a bus or did I come on a train? Because my mother was very private. She was very private, to be honest with you. She was very hurt in terms of the way she grew up and there were a number of things. So she never liked to talk about her past. And so I just want to say, you know, thank you for making the decision to at least let us share something. But I really want to thank you, Ann. Oh, I've always loved you. <laughs> and especially you come and have, have known children. I know I used to feel like to know you all before you got here. You know, uh, the Merrick family, the Hood family, the Hinton, the Tall and on. The Graves family. I was surprised that Mr. Will was not in that history. Will Graves. Um, well, the people were at that meeting. So I just, I, I just want to acknowledge and, and thank everyone. And no, I mean this is that. There's nobody here but me, and that's kind of the way it was. Yeah. The Taylor family. We were kind of private. We was, we were scattered. We, we had our, our history, but. Um, when I think back to school, my grandfather, mm -hmm. Gil Taylor, who I really couldn't stand, <laughs> but it's interesting because he, he, he was old school. And, and when I wanted to go play, he wanted me to be with him doing the garden stuff. So if my grandmother Gil, that I could hear them. And, but here's the issue. My grandfather who never had a formal education. He taught me the value of education. Mm -hmm. And it was by a chicken coop. Yeah. <laughs> right? My grandfather had a cane. A lot of guys that got older, they had canes. And, I mean, so my grandfather had his cane. And he would ABC, one, two, three. Well, my other cousins never, they just took the wolf. <laughs> but he introduced me into the value of education. And I actually, I went to the one room school. There's a one room school right here on Clinton Street. One room school set up, yeah. sit up there. Evidently, my grandmother or my grand used to sit me in that school four years old. Four years old, I began to, to understand education as a way out. When you live in Falmouth, the reality is, and I don't think it's just had to be Falmouth that time, you always look for a way out. You always thought, what's my way out? What's my, how do I get to another level? 
And I found out through education. Yeah. Sharon, we found out the mere fact that Sharon and I come back and we kind of represent the different students. Uh, I think he said 11 and then 3, 14, and 14 students. We kind of represent the folk who kind of went on and, and got more education. Mm -hmm. We knew that. Our patients, everybody grew up. So I went to one school, and, and like I said, I, I can always remember being alone. In fact, my grandma in this in the city, I could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I so I was thinking, man, I got family here, but it's just me, and that's kind of the way it was. So went to Banner High School. It wasn't a, it, I remember it wasn't a bus. It was a station wagon. <laughs> and, and I didn't remember that. Someone told me my grandfather drove it. I don't even remember that. But we went 22 miles, 44 miles, round trip that's never come out of my mind every morning. Think of that. In the first grade, we had to do that, and we knew the reason we had to. Just think, you live in the community. You know that because of the color of your skin, as early as five and six, we knew that our color of our skin made a difference. Yeah. So go to Banneker High School, and I remember teaching their, their name, Miss JT, and then this thing, Brown versus Board of Education. I mean, it's kind of like Paul, like a whirlwind. You just look up, what? We can go to, to the white school? <laughs> and that wasn't happy. That was scary. Because just think, you're going somewhere where people don't want you. you you going somewhere where people in that community have, have people call you names, call your family names, etc. And now you don't have your grandfather driving you. Here you are. Just think, y'all hear the numbers. We enter Falmouth High School. And let me say this. Uh, my, my memories of Fama, the first grade, second grade, really is not negative because I fell in love with two things. My teachers and playing sports. And three, and students that I began to meet. Now, let me tell you the negative thing, and then I'll sit down and hope you got other questions. <laughs> but when you go into history, it really, that was one of my reluctances about coming back to but even though we have this conversation at 73 years old, this is still a very painful experience. The, the, the scar of oppression never leaves you. It, it never, no matter how old you get, what you achieve, when you begin to, to, to think back and, and think where you came from, right? And so that first grade year, uh, I was glad to stay home, but here was the issue. I learned in that first grade year, there's your place. I could play with these new students, but I could never go home with them. I, I could play with these new students, but I couldn't go to the show and sit in the same place with them. I, I, could, I could play with these students, but I, I couldn't go to the pool room. I could play with these students, but I couldn't go when it was time to learn how to swim. I could play with these students, but I couldn't learn how to roller skate. But you accepted it, and you accepted your place, right? So that's, that's just my first grade. Just think when I get to the other experiences. But I have to say this. I learned very early that your mind can make a critical difference, that education can make a critical difference in how you accept it and what you determine to do. And that, that, that was me, my, my determination. My determination to excel, really, and I have to give family credit, even with the negative, has started right here. There's never a time I've talked when I haven't said where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Because if, even if, if I would say where I'm from because of the negative things, I would, I would be disrespecting a person like you, yeah. right? I'd be disrespecting all the different people who made it possible, not just who look like me. So that's a long answer uh, to, to the, first, the first grade experience. You could tell it was new for the teachers. 
You could tell, I'm glad to hear them, but you could tell the teachers were caught in the middle. Because the teachers had to teach you, but at the same time, they knew that they had to limit you. So they knew their contradiction. The teachers knew the contradiction that they had to live in. So they did the best that the best thing that they, you know, they, they did whatever they could do to do the best. So I sit down, let come over and touch me. <laughs>
would practice and the game was over, they would go sit downstairs, I had to sit upstairs and come back that next day and practice with them. Think how that impacts you as a young person. You know, so thank God that young people who live in family, I know there's still issues, didn't have to experience some of the things that we had. So, uh, you know, you asked the gender issue, you're probably right, you know, at that time, she was only little boys could play sports. Nobody was encouraging little girls to do that, right? So, probably, when I think back to Pat, Sharon, yes, they were guarded. Young girls were kept in, and I could be out at night. But Sharon would have to be in at night. Sharon would be expected to do well academically, right? If I did, it's okay. This is my question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm here today with uh, Chipper McGee, Eddie McGee. We always call him Chipper here in Falmouth. And um, he was one of the first students to uh, attend the integrated schools in Pendleton County. Uh, he was bused to Harrison County the first year of his school career. And then he came to Falmouth after that. So hi, Chipper. We're glad you're here today. Thank you. Um, what do you remember about being sent to Harrison County to school? I know you're first grader. That's going back a long way. I know it was a long ride. <laughs> yes. First time I saw a candy machine was there. <laughs> In the school? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. We had a place where you could buy candy. Okay. And I, that's the first time I ever saw a candy machine. Because <laughs> we had two grocery stores where I grew up. Mm -hmm. One was in my block. And John Kellum's store was across the street on Park Street. Okay. But there's never much traffic. So then I remember mom used to give me a note and five dollars and I'd go to the store and I'd, I'd be all morning hauling groceries. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she kept you busy. <laughs> yeah, but five dollars bought a lot in those days. Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember who drove you to Harrison County to school? You remember what now? Who drove, who drove you all to school? No, you all George went in a Porter. private vehicle, didn't you? George Porter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he drove his own car, didn't he? I don't know if it was the county station wagon or his. Yeah, I, I think it was his. Um, I've heard people around Morgan where George lived say it was he furnished his car and the county reimbursed him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, were you were you happy to come to um, Falmouth then to school after that? Yeah, I spent my second grade in Falmouth. Yeah. How how was that? What what was it like coming to Falmouth? Did you notice? Was it different for you? You walked to school. I know that, right? Yeah, most of the time, with some neighbors that walked me, walk with me. Mm -hmm. Talked me as he's older. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any trouble. You didn't? Okay. And recess was okay? Yeah. Well, that's good. But of course, so you grew up in Falmouth, so you already probably knew some of your classmates. No. Didn't in my neighborhood, there never was very many children the same age. Okay. Hmm. 
That's interesting. Now, I know your sister, Sharon, um, who was also on this program, went to Pendleton to high school. Did you or did you stay at Falmouth? I stayed at Falmouth. Okay. Okay. Um, great in 67. Okay. Then, so shortly after you graduated, you got drafted into the Army, right? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that experience, if you'd like. Well, I had a hundred dollar a week job out to the Ford garage. And they drafted me to send me to Fort Benning, Georgia for basic training. And after basic training was over, they sent me to jerk right straight to Germany with no training and put me in an army garage with no training for $69 a month. Oh, wow. No, I didn't like that. No, who would? Yeah. Wow. Now, I know in World War II, you're Vietnam, so that's a little later on, but in World War II, they, they didn't have the troops integrated. After that, they did. Eisenhower was the man who integrated the troops. So I'm assuming you were in an integrated unit, correct? Well, oh, later on, Mike Fisher... You know, from Silver Lake Rides. Mm -hmm. He and I had a tow truck together. Okay. And how long did you do that? That was back when we was in high school. Oh, really? Okay. So you all were entrepreneurs even then. <laughs> yeah, and then I went to, I got drafted and had to go to the service. And later on, I think they, I don't know if they drafted him into the Marines or where they volunteered. Okay. But we both were in the service mostly at the same time. Okay. And, and that was what, 67, 8? Oh, we, we got out of school in 67. Okay. And so then you went pretty much right after that, correct? I did. I went in January 1st of 69. 69. Okay. When January the 4th when I got inducted. Okay. Did you stay in Germany the whole time? No. I, they treated me good in Germany, gave me a rank real fast, and 14 months later, they wanted me to be a buck sergeant. Okay. That only paid $35 more a month. So just a little bit over a dollar a day, maybe a dollar a nickel or something. Yeah. So anyway, that was my punishment for not, I didn't study political science in school. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that they couldn't hardly let me stay there when I turned down Buck Sergeant. Everybody else wanted it. And I'd only been in the Army 14 months. Right. So then they sent me to Vietnam. Okay. And then that's when I started working on heavy equipment. Okay. I was in a combat engineer outfit when I was a fifth instrument mechanic. That's the last place it went if we couldn't fix the junkie. Okay. So I stayed there about seven plus months doing that. That's when I got interested in big tractors. Okay. And then you came home after that, right? You, yeah, you just did the I'm one tour? Yeah, I paying all of it for $250 a month. Okay. So I didn't like to pay in the military. No, I can imagine. <laughs> so I did get offered a job as being a mechanic for 24000 a year. Wow. Working for a civilian contractor. And that was good money at that time. Yeah, they're shooting at you too. Okay, so, so there was some hazard involved. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I decided I didn't want to come back and do that. Right. What about what? What do you um, remember about Falmouth as a kid growing up here that you like to share with us? I know your dad had a business. Yeah, my uncle did too. Okay. Yes, Willie. Huh? 
Willie was your uncle, right? Willie. Yeah, he ran the barber shop. Barber shop, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't want to be a barber because I didn't want to stand up all day. <laughs> and Dad taught me a lot about mechanics. He taught me enough. I got a job when I was 16 at another garage. Okay. I'm with auto sales. And they paid me good. That was J.B. Delaney. Okay. So I, I can't complain too much about the opportunity of family. Right. Your father was a very well-respected man in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was uh, known as a good mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that helped you a lot? I'm sure it did. I mean, I like doing it. Right. I'd rather do that than play ball when I was growing up. <laughs> he got a welder when I was about 13. I was fascinated with that. I welded. I made a picnic table for the family. Oh, and it lasted all the way up to the 97 flood. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. Had some debris on it and tore it up. The flood did. Right. Yeah. But then I had my own garage and I had everything I owned in the 97 flood. And I was making my first big dump truck. And I backed it out that day to clean up the garage floor. And the flood water started coming up. They kept telling me 42 feet. But I could I could stand 42 feet, but I couldn't stand 52 feet. Right. That's what it got to in Falmouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had some houses. I think I had seven pieces of property by then. And all that got wet. Yeah. And did they all make it through the flood, all of your buildings? No, some of that stuff floated away. I didn't have any insurance on anything. And so many people didn't, yeah. But I did get the dump truck out of the way and I had an old front end loader and I drove that out of the way. So that's all I had to work with when, when the water went down. Yeah, that was a bad put water in my garage. Mm -hmm. Now, you lived on the family property in town, correct? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And that had been in your family for a very long time. Do you, do you know how long? Mm. Well, the house I grew up in, Dad bought it. I guess he bought it in 47. Okay. Or 46 or 47. Where I built my garage is on family property that had been in the mm -hmm. family over 100 years. Yeah. Did you, does your family descend from Charity Southgate? Yeah. Okay. It was Ida, right? Was your grandmother or great grandmother yeah. or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The geese. Okay. Yeah. She was on Southgate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Southgates own pretty much that whole street, I think, or that end of that block of that street, Montjoy. Yeah, they had a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a great story, too, in itself, the Southgate yeah. family. But the McGee family has an interesting story, too, though, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything that you want people to know about you? Or, or about how Falmouth was, or anything you can you'd like to tell us that we've not talked about here. We've talked about, about all of it. <laughs> Back when in business there, I've bought, I've had occupation license for fifty plus years yeah. in Falmouth, the same location. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about living in Falmouth, or your life, or your family? No, it's a pretty good life living in family for me. Wasn't much money, but right. I had to work in Cincinnati to get my money. I did auto body work for about 30 years. 
Yeah. I start out, I think Bill and Rosemobile, they're out of business now. Rock and Feel Ford. Just to name a few of them. Yeah. Jim Aki Pontiac, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't complain about living in Falmouth. 